What's up YouTube? In today's video, I have something pretty exciting to announce. Wizardry 2.0 is live. I've taken feedback from some recent things FinSuite has said about Wizardry, feedback I've received from the community, and used that to improve Wizardry even further. Really, the foundation of Wizardry is still the same though. It gives us design precision in Webflow. So this is the new Wizardry Fluid Calculator. And basically the first thing it asks us for is the width of our XD or Figma design. Whenever we're using Fluid Typography, we need to take into account the width of the original design. This gives us a reference of where to scale up or down from. And without factoring this in, our elements will all look too large or too small on every screen size. So how do we get this design width? Well, usually we can take the width of our artboard or frame, which is 1440 in this case, but sometimes we'll be given what the design looks like on a larger screen size. And in that case, we just wanna take the width of the container plus any paddings inside that container, which is still 1440 in this case. Now we used to have to apply the size anytime we wanted to convert any pixel value to EMs. Now all we have to do is apply it once here and it changes the body font size to be based on that design width. So you'll notice any design width I apply affects the body font size. And now we only have to factor that in one time. So what I can do is basically just copy this code and basically paste it inside an embed on my page and save. And now if I wanna convert any pixel font size to EMs, all I have to do is grab that pixel font size, which in this case, the heading is 80 pixels and divide that by 16. So what I'll do is head over to my all H1 tag and do 80 divided by 16 EM, hit enter, and that converts it to the EM equivalent. And you'll notice that unit and that measurement looks a lot cleaner because it's all based on a 16 pixel base font size. And we can do the same thing for our containers. Uh, so this 96, we'll divide it by 16. And it's just an easier unit to remember and to work with. So if I divide this by 16, it's converting it to the EM equivalent. And now we'll notice that those EM sizes are scaling up and down. So at a 1440 screen size, the width of my original design, my five EM heading is equal to 80 pixels. But at any size below that, we'll notice that this heading is a little bit smaller. And at any size above that 1440, we'll notice the heading grows in size. So it's using that 1440 as a base to scale up and down from. Now the next field we have, which is optional, is the max width. This is the size at which we want everything to just stop scaling. And basically a good example of this is Stripe. Instead of showing you this exact same design at a larger screen size where everything would look too large and overwhelming, they basically just show you more of an element that you didn't see before. And you can see more of the next section peeking in underneath. So this is really an advantage to having a larger screen anyway. It's just being able to see more content. And a max width really helps with preventing the content from getting too large. So for our max width, it can be the same as our design width, or it could be something a little larger. In this case, I may go with 1560. And all it's gonna do is set our container to the max width of 1560 pixels, and it'll set our body font size to pixel font size at that screen. So I can basically copy this code, head back over to Webflow again, and paste this inside an embed on my page and save. And then what we'll notice when we preview is that the 1560 mark, everything just basically locks in place and it stops getting any larger. We can also set a minimum screen width for our elements to stop shrinking at. Here you'll notice that our fluid elements, in this case our heading and our button, are getting way too small compared to more of our fixed elements like the paragraph and the logo. And they're kind of losing that contrast that we're going for. So we can pick a screen size at which we want them to stop scaling. In this case, I may use tablet, which is 991 pixels. So inside the calculator, I can just turn on the min width and it defaults to the tablet breakpoint. So at 991, uh, our body font size will just stop scaling. So we can basically just copy that and head back over to our embed and paste this in. And if we save and preview that, we'll notice on desktop, it's fully fluid. And then on tablet, things basically just start to wrap and it stops scaling and that's perfect. We also have the option to implement minimum font sizes on individual elements. So say this button here may be getting too small even before tablet, but we still want the heading and some other elements to keep scaling down. We can say maybe at the 1200 pixel mark, we want this button to stop scaling. Well, first we would just grab the font size of it 
and then we'd head over to our wizardry builder and we'll say at the 1200 screen size its font size is 1.125 em and its class is button and basically if we copy this code now and head back to wizardry and paste this in what we'll notice is that basically our button is going to stop scaling right at that 1200 pixel mark and it'll stop scaling at the correct proportion while our heading continues to scale. Now, so far, all of our fixed elements have been set using pixels and all of our EM elements are based on a body viewport with font size. And the problem with that is that if the user increases their font size preference, the size of these elements don't increase. In Wizardry, we use EMs for sizes that are gonna be fluid and REMs for sizes that will be fixed. That way these REMs can inherit from the user's font size preference. So to do that, all we have to do is divide the pixel font size by 16 and add REM to the end, just like we do with the EMs. So this logo here, if it has a width of 160, I would divide that by 16 and add REMs. And now it's a fixed size that inherits from the user's font size preference. I'll do the same thing for the margin and anything else that I want to be fixed. Now the wizardry calculator has an option to switch our body viewport with font size to a font size that can be adjusted by the user's preference using JavaScript. So if we switch our body unit to rim, that's gonna add a bit of JavaScript. And what we'll do is first of all, copy over our CSS again, because it converted all of our pixel container widths and pixel font sizes to rims. So we'll copy that CSS and use it to replace the CSS in our embed. But then we'll also copy over the JavaScript and it's using the min and max sizes we've defined. And we'll wanna paste it in our project settings custom code head tag section. That way it runs while the CSS is still being loaded in early on. Now our fluid elements and fixed elements are still behaving the same way, but if the user increases their font size preference, we'll notice that the size of our fluid and fixed elements increase as well, and the fluid elements continue to scale. One more thing to keep in mind is whenever we zoom, the size of our fluid elements aren't increasing and the size of our fixed elements are. That's because whenever we zoom in, zooming just shows us the smaller screen size at our larger screen width. And since this heading looks exactly the same on the smaller size as it does on the larger one, it's not appearing to get any larger when we zoom. And sadly, this is the case anytime we're using proportional scaling type, it won't appear to get any larger when we zoom. So we have an option for disproportional scaling, and basically that won't use any JavaScript, it's just CSS only, and it's gonna basically take our max width, or if we don't have any max width, it'll rely on our design width, and it's just gonna set that to the correct font size at the largest size, and then we can choose which uh, screen size we wanna scale it down to. In this case, it's the smallest version of desktop. And it's gonna tell us we need to increase this font size for accessibility. We just need to make sure uh, that the difference isn't too extreme where users can still zoom in. So basically from our largest size of desktop to our smallest, it'll go from the 17 pixels to the 12.8. And then on tablet, in this case, I'll go from 12.8 and maybe I'll just let it scale down ever so slightly uh, to maybe 11 at the very smallest size, zero pixel mobile. And then what I can do, it's still gonna factor in my minimum font size I have on my button, but using this new uh, calculation here. And what I can do is just copy all the CSS, paste it in my custom code embed, and delete my JavaScript. So with disproportional scaling, once we've reached our max width, everything's the correct size and proportions to each other but below the max width, the text actually starts to wrap because it's not scaling perfectly with the viewport width. It's actually scaling at a slower rate. So it's a little bit larger than it would normally be the closer it gets to tablet. And that's what allows zooming to actually work is because now when we zoom, it actually is increasing that size a little bit. And again, the user still has control to increase this from their font size preference. But what if we have a design where we don't want the text to wrap and break onto new lines? Well, in that case, we can choose to scale up. And basically, I need to reduce the max font size again to get away from the error message. But once we have that, we're basically making everything in the correct proportions right before the tablet breakpoint in this case. And then we're gonna scale up at a slower size so that way the text can never really wrap. So here, our font size will be 11. We'll keep it 11 there too. And then I'll just copy this code. 
and then I'll go ahead and put it inside the embed. And what we'll notice now is right before tablet, so right at the smallest size of desktop, our container's uh, full width. And then past that, the container is growing, but at a slower rate than the screen width. So the text is never really wrapping, and this is still scaling disproportionately, but we don't have any breaking of the lines of text. So this still allows for zooming, and this could potentially work for some designs that don't depend on a full width container. Lastly, I can save all these settings if I want. So I can basically name my project, and then I'll uh, basically copy the URL with all the settings. If I refresh the page, obviously all that work is gone. But if I just paste in my URL here, it saves in everything that I've applied so far. So I can come back and tweak it later. So that's an overview of the Wizardry Fluid Calculator.